everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I'm really happy to bring you the Easy Basket Weave Lap Blanket. I have made this blanket a smaller size so that it would be very easy for somebody um, who perhaps is in a wheelchair or just wants a smaller size blanket. Now that said, if you want to make yours larger, all you need to do is add multiples of 10 to the original starting chain. And if you want to make your blanket longer, you just make more repeats of what I'm about to show you in just a second. Well, let's go ahead and get started. For this project, I will be using Paint Box Yarns Simply Chunky. This is available from lovecrafts.com and I do have a link in the video description below. And this yarn is 100% acrylic. Each ball has 100 grams or 3.5 ounces. That's 136 meters or 149 yards. The number of balls that you will need will be listed across the bottom of your screen. I'm also recommending that you have a size K or 10.5 or 6.50 millimeter crochet hook. And as always, I recommend you have a pair of sharp scissors and a yarn needle handy. To begin, we're going to start with our slip knot and a starting chain of 114 chains. After you have your 114 chains, we're going to work row one, starting in the fourth chain from the hook. We're going to work a double crochet in each chain across. At the end of this row, you should have 111 double crochets. So this is what you should have after completing row one. Now, if you wanted to make your blanket wider, you can simply add multiples of 10 to the original starting chain and if you want to make it smaller, you can subtract multiples of 10 from that same starting chain. Now we're ready to begin row number two. We're going to start with a chain two. And for the first uh, several rows, we're going to work what we call ribbing. And ribbing is that effect that you often see around the cuffs of knitted or crocheted sweaters and usually around the bottom of sweaters. So what we're going to do is we're going to work post stitches. We're going to skip this stitch and in the next stitch, we're going to work a post stitch. Now post stitches are not worked through the top loops the way you normally would. Instead, we're going to give them a belt. So we prepare the hook with wrapping it once and I'm going to go in the front door and the hook is going to go around the body of the stitch. Then we hook our yarn, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, like we normally would for a double crochet. The back post double crochet, very similar. We wrap our hook. It's just that we come in the back door and we go in front of the next stitch. So you can see that the hook is kind of wrapped around the stitch. Pick up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so let's do that again. We're going to go in the front door to do a front post double crochet. And then we're going to come in the back door on the next one. I think once you understand this stitch, you'll find that it's quite easy, actually even easier than working in through the top loop. So let's do that all the way across front post double crochet, followed by a back post, double crochet. Again, front post, and coming in the back door, back post, double crochet. And this is the way this should look. It's going to create these highly defined lines in our work. And the one thing that's beautiful about this is it's totally reversible. This this project is going to be 100% a reversible project. All right, so go ahead and work that all the way across the row, and I'll show you how this row ends. At 
the end of the row, work a half double crochet right into that chain three space. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. And you should have 111 stitches. That would be 110 post stitches plus the half double crochet. Let's go ahead and turn. And we are going to work the next three rows the exact same way. We chain two, and just like we did with row two, we're going to work a front post double crochet. Notice that we are skipping this first stitch, followed by a back post double crochet. And it should be easier to see whether you work a front or a back post because the front post stitches will be sticking out in the front and the back post will be protruding in the back. So front post, double crochet, back post, double crochet. So go ahead and work rows three, four, and five all the same way. And then I'll show you how to begin the next part. This is what you should have after completing five rows. Okay, on to row number six, and this is where we are going to start the new motif. We're going to chain two, and we're going to work the same ribbing over the first five stitches. Okay, we're going to skip that first stitch, and we're going to work a front post, followed by a back post, and then another front post, a back post, and a front post. So you should have a total of five stitches, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, after doing that, we are going to work five front post double crochets. This is establishing the actual basket weave portion. Okay, so again, this stitch is part of the ribbing, but we have one, two, three, four, five stitches for the basket weave, front post double crochets, and now we're going to work five back post double crochets. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to work that all the way across until we get to the last five stitches. So now we go back to five front post double crochets. And again, followed by five back post double crochets. All right, let's take a look at that. So go ahead and work that until you get to the last five stitches. After having worked this, all the way across, we come to the last five stitches. And for the last five stitches, you follow what the stitches are doing. One, two, three, four, five stitches. We start with a back post double crochet, then a front post, a back post, a front post, and a back post. Post. So make sure that you work over those five stitches and then a half double crochet worked in the turning chain. So these stitches will remain the same on each side and will be a nice border for this project. Okay, so now for the next row, we're going to turn, chain two, and this is actually what you are going to work for the next four rows. Skip that first stitch. We work 
those five ribbing stitches, the front post, double crochet, back post, double crochet, front post, double crochet, back post, double crochet, and a front post, double crochet. So these are those ribbing which are separate. Now starting the other pattern stitch for the basket weave, we front post double crochet in each of the next five stitches just like we did on the last row. Although it's going to be much easier to see what to do because we are just continuing what we started on the last row. After we do that, we work five back post double crochets. And you see it's starting to develop. So now that's what we're going to do all the way across. Five front post, five back post, and we work this until we get to the end of the row and just like with the previous row that would be row six we work back post front post back post front post back post over those last five stitches and then a half double crochet in the turning chain so go ahead and work rows seven eight nine and ten in the same way so we've just worked row six we're starting on row seven, so seven. After you complete this row, you'll have three additional rows. But the goal is, with the basket weave, you're going to have five of these rows that look the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish those next five rows, and then I'll show you what I have. This is what your throw should look like after completing 10 rows. Let's go ahead and look at how well this is developing here. Okay, so now we are going to begin row number 11 and we are going to turn and we're going to chain two, one, two, and we are going to do the first five rows the same. Skip that first stitch, front post, that's one, back post, that's two, front post, back post and one more so that we do these five stitches. Let's double check this again. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now for row number 11, we're going to reverse the direction of these post stitches and this is going to give it the basket weave look. So where you were working front post, Okay, for row 11, we're going to work five back post double crochets. And the last one, number five. Let's just stop and take a look at that. It will look better once you work a few more rows. You'll understand this a little bit better. Now, when you have the section, where you have been working back post double crochets, we're going to work front post double crochets. And the, the mystery of the basket weave is as simple as that. So every five rows, you just reverse the direction of the weave, either, you know, front post or back post, do the opposite. And that's what gives it the woven uh, basket weave look. Okay, so we're going to do that all the way across. Wherever you see the front post, okay, we're going to work five back post double crochets. And two more. And what's nice about this is it's very visual. So you really probably should count to some degree, but you'll know right away if you have made a mistake. And then when you get to the next five stitches, we work five front post. It's 
So wherever you see back post, just reverse it. Work those front posts. All right, so let's stop and take a look at what we've done. So again, just to review, whatever you do at the beginning and at the end of the rows, that does not change throughout the entire project. However, for rows 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, we're gonna begin the rows after these ribbing stitches. We will do five back post and then five front post, five back post and five front post. So go ahead and work that across and I'll work the last five stitches with you. After repeating these across the row, we still have five stitches remaining. So let's go ahead and work those. We start with a back post, double crochet, front post, back post, front post, and then another back post, and a half double worked in that turning chain. And let's go ahead and do take time to do a visual check to make sure that you did reverse the direction of those post stitches in each of those five stitch groupings. Okay, it looks good. It's just easier to do a visual check now than to have to rip out the row and redo it later. Okay, so now for rows 12, 13, 14, and 15, they are all worked the same way. We're going to chain two, and once again, skip that first stitch, and working those ribbing stitches over the first five stitches, That's three, four, and five. And, and let me just take note of something here. Notice how this ribbing stitch really uh, was right up against the first five stitches, but now it's going to stand out better as a ribbing stitch as we work the next four additional rows. So just like row 11, the Next four rows, start by working five back post double crochets. That's four, five, and the next five stitches are gonna be front post double crochets. So notice that the, these four rows, you're going to basically repeat what you see. The only time you actually reverse the direction is the first of those, these five row groupings. Let me show you. So like this will be a five row grouping and the next one we're going to make here for these rows are going to be five rows. Okay. So when you work the second, third, fourth, and fifth row, you're not reversing anything. You're just going with what you see. If you see front post, do front post. And of course, this is back post, so you're gonna work the back post stitches. So go ahead and work this all the way across. When you get to the end of the row, don't forget to work these five stitches, and it does start with a back post, front post, back post, front post, back post, and then a half double crochet. Go ahead and work four additional rows. That again is row 12 through 15. This is what you should have after completing 15 rows. Now that we have completed this, let me go ahead and give you a large assignment. What we are going to do now is we're going to go back and we're going to repeat rows six through row 15. We will do that over and over until we reach the length that we desire on this blanket. Go ahead and look across the bottom of the screen and I'll show you how many rows I was able to repeat. But keep in mind that you can make this larger as I expressed before. And you can easily make this longer by making it, by just repeating the rows 
number 6 through 15. So go ahead and work that and I will show you how to return back to the ribbing rows for the last uh, five rows. So let's go ahead and I'm going to give you a measurement on this. Again, this is using um, the number five weight yarn. You can work this in number four weight and if you do, you may get a slightly different measurement. So it's approximately three inches. Okay. So whatever size you want this to be lengthwise minus three inches, you're going to want to work in the motif though. Make sure that you complete in groupings of five before you um, go to the section where I will show you how to return to the ribbing. Now that I have completed the repeats, I just want to give you some numbers here. I have repeated the 10 row basket weave repeat a total of eight additional times. If you count each of these sections one by one, I have 18 total, one, two, three, four, etc. Um, now, if you want to make your lap blanket longer, you are certainly welcome to just continue um, this pattern. You don't even have to do 10 row repeats. You can even just do five rows if you only want it a little bit longer. So, but at this point, um, I am two and a half inches from the total length. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how to return back to the ribbing that we started with at the very beginning. I'm going to chain two and again, skipping that first stitch on the end, we're going to work front post, double crochet, and back post, double crochet, just the way we started every single row of this project. Over those five stitches. And then after we do that, we are just going to continue that same pattern. So we ended with a front post. We're going to work a back post and then a front post, back post, and front post. And we're going to alternate this all the way across the row. And I'll show you how the last five stitches work. They should line up perfectly um, with this project. So go ahead and work these all the way across and I'll show you the end of this row. After working this all the way across the row, I finished with a front post double crochet and now to the last five stitches and the next stitch does work out. It's a back post double crochet and followed by the front post. And so we're going to finish these last five stitches up just the way all the other rows have ended. And don't forget that last stitch. Make sure you do all five stitches. And then we work the half double crochet in the chain two turning chain. Okay, so now the next four rows are going to all be the same. We're going to chain two and again, skip that first stitch and we're just going to work front post double crochet followed by a back post double crochet all the way across the row. And do make sure that where you have front post, work a front post, and where you have a back post, work a back post so that you maintain the ribbing pattern all the way across. So go ahead and work four more rows and then we're going to fasten off. After having worked all the way across and I'm getting ready to fasten off, I just give it a chain and give it a tug and this is where the sharp scissors come in. Make sure that you cut a nice long tail so that it makes it easier to weave in the end. All right, so let me go ahead and give you just a quick uh, tutorial on how to hide these loose ends and you are going to have to do many. Um, and you can even, um, when you're hiding these, if you wanted to weave in two strands at a time, that is possible, but you just need to be very careful about doing that. Now, since this project is totally reversible, it really doesn't matter what side you weave these ends in. You just need to make sure that you get them in securely. So I am weaving these through 
the end here. And you see how I'm just weaving this in carefully. Now I am going to pull back on this occasionally because if you don't and you pull it real tight and you clip it and when you pull it back that little edge is going to show. So do make sure that you give a pull back on um, you know, on the stitching as you hide these loose strands. And this, these are going to be very easy to hide here because of the common color that we have. So I'm going to I'm going to go in over to this next, and I, I am weaving this one in probably far more than I really need to. Let's go ahead and stop it there. Okay, I've pulled that all the way in, and I've given it a really good pull back. And so now I'm going to very carefully clip this close to my work, but being careful not to clip any strands. And you can see that is well hidden, and it should stay within the work. Um, now, if you wash these things over time, you might see them sticking out here and there, just a little poke. And if that happens, this is where it's good to use a nice long thread to be woven in because that way it gives you a chance to just give it a little clip every now and then if you feel like you have need to do that. Well, let me go ahead and show you some photos of this project. <music> making the easy basket weave lap blanket with me today. If you did, I would just love to hear from you. Uh, just please post a comment below. God bless. Bye-bye.